Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the International Fab Talks. As usual, we are back again, and we have a wonderful celebrity joining us all the way from Tamil Nadu, from Amba Samudram. She is Meena Raja, a wonderful transformational coach. Join me, friends, to get to know more about her, to celebrate her life journey, and learn the expertise that she has and the wisdom that she's ready to share with us. She has joined us here on special request. So let's make the most of this beautiful session. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Namaskaram. Namaskaram, ma'am. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation to the International Fab Talks. We thank you for taking thank out you. the time and being here. That really means a lot to us. Thank you so much. I just I go should ahead. thank uh, yes. Mr. Chidambaram on this uh, occasion because he was the one who really wanted me to be part of this uh, very great uh, Fab Talks uh, done by you. So I was so inspired by his uh, interview with you. And also inspired by the way you interviewed him also. Thank you so much, ma'am. That, that really makes me feel good. And you've humbled me. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank Mr. Chidambaram, sir, for being very good and kind to all of us. He has a wonderful heart. We wish him a lot of happiness and peace. And thanks once again, sir. Ma'am, I go ahead and share your profile in an official video. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Dear friends, it's always a pleasure when you find people around you who want to transform your lives. When they have transformed themselves from within, they have this urge, they have this beautiful calling, the universal calling to transform others. And hence, here we have a wonderful freelancer who is a transformational coach who seeks you know, a very challenging position in the area of training. She wants to take up the challenge and train people in the right way. And she has this longing or this urge or this, you know, this beautiful concept in her mind of transforming people's lives for the better. If she sees you, you are not in an, uh, you're not okay. She wants to see that you change for the best because many of us have a lot of issues here. We don't tell it out openly. But yes, if you meet a transformational coach, you could definitely transform your life in the right way. So, dear friends, let's join together and have this beautiful session with ma'am. She also believes in touching uh, touching lives, inspiring people. And she would love to contribute in every single way for that change within you. She would keep it very confidential and she would continue the session with you to make a better future for you and for all. And she's an excellent person with great interpersonal skills. As you connect with her, you will already know that she's very warm, gentle. You can connect with her on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group session too. She's almost welcome. And uh, she also builds in uh, focuses on team building. As I earlier mentioned, it's a one-to-one -one session as well as well as a team building session. So we're all benefit together from one session. It could be like that. She also focuses on leadership. She focuses on communication skills. And she focuses on transforming you as a better uni uh, individual for this country and as well as this universe. Now, if I go on talking, I will not end. So I will stop talking and sharing and I'll ask our guest to share more. You will be very happy when she begins to share. So dear ma'am, I've been just sharing Thanks. a little that you are a transformational coach. You're a wonderful human being. You have excellent communication skills. You would like to focus on leadership and you're interested in transforming lives of individuals as well as focusing on team building, all of that and much more. I've just shared a little. If I would ask you this question, how would you define yourself? Who is the real Meena Raja? From Amba Samudra, Tamil Nadu, India. Yes. How would I define myself? I'm just an ordinary human being created by the great God. I just consider myself a very normal human being. I don't uh, see myself as something more than that. So I just, uh, I'm just a normal human being. Yes, dear. That's very humble of you to say, I'm just a normal, simple human being. This is the way to be down. That's the to fact, work. actually. That's the fact, actually. You know, we're just normal human beings. You no, know? we just be made that way. But ma'am, I, I, I differ on that. See, when you are normal, when you treat each other in the right way, you become abnormal when you treat each other in the wrong way. That is my concept. And that's really nice to say that I'm a very, a very normal human being, a very simple one at that down to earth. Beautiful, ma'am. I would like to ask you, what made you come into the field of training and why did you choose the transformational coaching style? 
I've been uh, into a family of Rotarians. My father was a Rotary governor. So I've traveled with him um, widely because when he was the governor, we had Ceylon, Sri Lanka, uh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu together. So I have traveled with him a long time. I've been with him for all his governor's official visits. So I've, I've heard him orate. And uh, from then I've been thinking, no, such, 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 a, such a great option to meet people. And then when I was married, I got a family who were mostly... Uh, lines in the Lions Club of um, Ambasamudram. And then uh, even here, we did a lot of service through Lions Club. And somehow through a friend, I got into this organization called JCI, uh, Junior Chamber International. So that's where I just joined just for the sake of a friend. And then when um, they found the potential in me, they said, why don't you become the president this year? And when I became the president, there was an opportunity to become a zone trainer in the uh, Junior Chamber International, JCI moment. So it is a process where you go through a lot of training to be a trainer. So in the process to get the certification done, we had to do certain hours of training in government schools and hours of training in some clubs. So when I was doing this hours of training in government schools, I saw the thirst the government school children had in learning new things. I could see the transformation right in front of my eyes. I could see the sincerity they wanted to know new things. And that's when I decided that uh, I have to do something for the government school children, for the girl, child, and the and women in general. So that's when I found the purpose of my life that I'm going to do this for the girl, child, and for the downtrodden children. So that made me um, continue as a trainer so, and then I'm going nonstop. It's not, I've never stopped from then. It's been a continuous journey. That's wonderful. That's so, really nice. That you've got a calling in that particular uh, Zoom, like seeing, wanting to see the transformation in children, especially the government ch uh, school children. Now, ma'am, in simple terms, how would you describe or define transformation? What it really means? Because there are some people, they know change, but many of them don't know what is transformation. So if you could just... Make it a little clear for our audience who are unaware of the word transformation or are unable to understand who is a transformational coach. Change, you can always change to something else and get back to what you previously were. So change is something which is not permanent. You can change and get back to your previous self. But when you say transform, you completely transform to a separate, no, in, into something else. But you don't have to get back and you can't get back to your previous self. You're already transformed. So when you say transform, it means that you become a better self, better part of you, another version of you, which is you already have all the potential in you. We don't realize that we can also transform to such a greater person. And when you, when you transform yourself, you realize that you have all the potential in you. And that's when you realize that transformation is possible in anybody. Change is temporary. Transformation is permanent. Wow, I like that. Change is temporary and transformation is permanent with regard to your mindset, your thought process. Ma'am, we've seen several youngsters who have found themselves in the wrong place, with the wrong thoughts or the wrong thought pattern and they are into depression and they are unable to come out of it. So there are many youngsters who have met me and who have said, ma'am, we are still un in this. We are unable to come out of depression and we don't know when we are slipping into it and when we we don't know how to come out. So what kind of help could we give such youngsters, the youth of India, the youth of the world? It's not only in India, connected with people from across the borders as well. Yeah. People don't realize, uh, realize what their true potential is. So to do realize that potential in them, I think everybody who is born here have to uh, do some research on their self-realization. They do some self-analysis about themselves. They should know what their strengths are. They should know what their weaknesses are. They should know of all the uh, things they are able to do, they can do. It is possible. And they should also realize that if one person can do something, anybody can do that. Being an NLP master practitioner, we learned this in NLP and there's a saying in NLP, it says that if one person can do something, anybody can do it. So people should realize that it is possible in me. 
I have all the potential in me. And also they should realize that this is my strength. This is my weakness. They should be aware of the weakness. They should also know to say no. Unless uh, you know to say no, it's difficult to go on pleasing everybody else. In spite of uh, not liking what you do, we, we try to please others in the fear of losing somebody's relationship, in the fear of, of uh, losing a person's love. We tend to oblige to whatever they do to us or oblige to whatever they say to us. We should, I think youngsters, especially, especially the girls, should know to say no. They should know, they should uh, treat their self-esteem above anything else in this world. That's the most important thing a girl can pressure for herself. So be it any uh, uh, matter, whatever sex they may be, they should have their own self-esteem and go according to what they think is right. Each person has a different perspective. So only what they think is right, they should continue doing, I feel so. Yes, dear. you explained that very well, ma'am. With a lot of clarity, you would uh, explain that. And ma'am, uh, but there are, I have seen that more than girls, boys suffer from mental health issues. From my personal experience, which I have come across uh, in my day-to-day -day, uh, you know, life, where I've seen many youngsters, only the boys, mostly the boys, not only the boys, mostly the boys. Girls, they will cry it out. They will go into one room or cry or cry on the spot. They relieve or release the stress within them. And then they become normal and connect, con conduct their activities or go about their day. But boys, they don't cry or they, they are unable to cry. And they keep it within them and they start thinking, overthinking, overthinking. And they are into that zone of being depressed. So only for the boys, what do you have to share, ma'am, as a transformational coach? Because I would love all the boys out there to connect with you, those who are like uh, hesitating to meet a transformational coach. Yes, dear. And we say boys don't cry because they've been tuned in a very, uh, in a way that uh, from... When they were young, you now they keep saying, boys shouldn't cry. Why should not they cry? They don't, they have also feelings. No, why should girls don't laugh loud? We've been treated that way. When I was very young, my mother used to tell me, don't, I mean, you're not supposed to laugh loud. And boys shouldn't cry. They also, both of us have emotions, right? Why shouldn't girls laugh loud? Why shouldn't boys cry? It's They're also equally emotional. So they've been tuned that way that boys should be brave, boys should be able to handle things, but they should not cry, they should not brood, they should come up with everything, everything positive. Treat them also as human beings, okay? They also have their own emotions. So I feel every uh, boy should come up with his emotion. It's okay to cry, so what? It's okay to cry and bring out whatever is inside you. Always have a shoulder to cry on. Because only if you are a true friend to somebody, only if you give your shoulder to cry on to somebody, somebody else will give their shoulder to you. And uh, always I feel that any youngster should have a mentor for themselves to guide them in a proper way. They always have a, a, you know, a very reliable a father or a mother or an aunt or an uncle at home or a teacher or a professor or a HOD. Somebody, each person has somebody, you know, they have regard for them. And we know that that person will be, uh, tell us the right choices, guide us in the right way. So in that way, you can just choose a mentor among your relatives, among your friends, among your society and choose a mentor and uh, who you think is really reliable, who you think will show you the right path. A guru will always show you the right path. So always have a mentor to guide you and always speak out your thoughts. Today, we hear of so many suicidal cases because they don't have anyone to talk to. They don't have anybody to hear them out. People are always judging them in a wrong way. It's okay to make mistakes. It's not uh, that everybody is 100% right. Everybody makes mistakes on some time or the other. Some people realize and come out of it. Some people are not able to come out of it and they feel so, so guilty and they don't have anybody to hear them out. That's why they go to some drastic you know, moments of where they're not able to live any longer. So always... Uh, Tell out your feelings. It's okay if somebody judges you in a wrong way also. At least you'll have some way out. So you have a mentor. Have somebody to speak it out. And it's okay if you've made mistakes. You can always live a better life. Life, There's only one life. 
So live it in the best way you can. So the advice I will give the youngsters is have a mentor, do a lot of self-analysis and do what you like. Yes, dear. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being so kind and sharing all of that. This is another big question coming up, ma'am, with regard to youngsters being oversensitive. You know, there are, anybody says anything, they are hurt. And of course, the, the individual, the youth, mm -hmm. the youngsters, there are several youngsters who are very good. They speak very politely with their friends and their colleagues and with their family members, but they are unable to take any type of negativity from them. When, when I've been speaking to them, they say, ma'am, I have been very good to them and I expect them to be good to me. Like I did not eat the lion, the lion should not eat me. That is their concept. Now, how are you going to break this for them, ma'am? Because they are in a, some other world. They have to know that if you, even if you are good in this world, there will be people who will hate you. So th there are certain people who think, no, they have done me wrong. I've been good all through my life. I want others to be good to me. Now, how can we deal with this and help them? I'm sure when they watch this video, they know about who I'm talking. It's for you, my dear friends, who have asked me to go ahead with this question. Yes, dear. Well, the regret is, uh, why do you expect something from somebody? So we always expect, that's why uh, we get angry. Because the only reason for us getting angry is, what we extract from somebody, we don't get it from them. That gives us that anger. So always, whenever you do something for a friend or something, you do it wholeheartedly, not expecting anything in return. You, when people say, I did so much for the family, why did I get in return? Why should you expect something in return? If you love your family, you do what you do, like what you do. Do it with sincerity. Do what you want for the family. Don't expect anything in return. I changed myself a lot because once I started not expecting anything in return. The same NLP has taught me that people are thankless. The blunt statement is people are thankless. When I say people, it means anybody. I hope you understand. It can be anybody in the family. It can be anybody in the society. It can be any, anybody in the close circle. People are thankless. They are thankless. So don't expect anything from people. Do If you're happy with what you're doing, do it. And one more thing is, only when you don't uh, have this empathy, you will start hating people. You will not uh, like what they do. So whatever you're going through with somebody, think of it in a situation. In You know, you know what empathy is. No? When, think of how it will be from their shoes. When you have that empathy, you will realize that in that position, that's how they would have been. Whenever a mother scolds us, no, we always think, oh, my mother is scolding me. But think of it in her position. What she's saying is right. They want the best of us. They want the best things to happen to us. They want us to be a better person. They want us to be better individuals in life and society. Be a good citizen in society. That's why they want certain things to happen to us in a very young age. That is the intention. So once you, you be empathetic and know the intention behind it will not hurt you as much as it's hurting you now you should sit and think twice why is it that they're saying so why are they not so close to me it's because we are not so close to anybody so there are a lot of things that um, come back to us you want love you should give love if you want joy you should give joy if you want attention you should give attention and that goes with appreciation, money, happiness, everything. So whatever you want in life, there's this um, law of karma which says whatever you give comes back to your double fold. So whatever you want in life, whatever you want in life, to be receiving in life, that much you have to give. And always think of the intention behind how that person is reacting, you know, how that person is behaving to you. The intention, once you find the intention, it will not hurt you as much as it's hurting you now. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Ma'am, as a woman, have you faced any of the challenges in, on the professional space? The professional space? Yes, being a trainer, there is a lot of challenges we are facing. One thing is gender. Because as a trainer, we tend to get back at late hours. We tend to go at very early hours. So that way, my family is being very supportive to me. They understand what I'm going through. They understand how, I, how it should be. 
and though it's uh, quite challenging i take my family as my first priority my family is first and then only i go for my training so i finish all my family course before i even step out of the house so that my training will be 100% uh, totally involved so whatever is concerned with the family i try to finish it first that's the first challenge secondly the late hours and thirdly you have to be updated otherwise you are outdated so the challenge of being updated all the time because we are hearing of new new things and now it's ai has become a big challenge for us so artificial intelligence has become a big challenge so whatever you say people okay that we know that we know that too with social media now it's not the same as before before whatever we said it used to be news to them but now it's all they already know so many things so you need to be really updated or uh, you need to read a lot and lot of books to really be something out of that normal crowd so these are the challenges we face in the as being as a trainer yes dear yes dear ma'am yes that's very true i like this you know if you're not updated you're outdated that's really nice now ma'am how were you as a little kid how was meena as a little kid was she the naughty one or was I, she was a very obedient child of the family <laughs> i was a very naughty child actually i we come from a very conservative family from rajapalayam so we are rajas from rajapalayam and very very conservative so as we when i attended puberty we were not supposed to go out of the house and that was a very conservative place where i did my schooling and since I, it was so conservative we were put up in uh, in hostels in kodaikanal so i almost did all my schooling studying in a hostel so once i came back home and uh, it was a very conservative family so we got they got me married i was a very uh, bubbly child very naughty child um, and i was the eldest in the family so i have two younger siblings and a younger brother uh, so it was a nice uh, closed it family so all my sisters my cousins we were all very close knit and very jolly going family my any, father was always any incident with your cousins that you did, parents did not know you all did something like anything like that <laughs> there was an instance where um, we were all playing and chewing bubble gum and then uh, we found we stuck this bubble gum in a chair where somebody was supposed to sit <laughs> so till date they don't know that one of us did that so it was fun doing that and a lot of instances like this where we used to play in the mirna beach have fun in the water you know it was real fun being in a close knit family like that it was a big family and uh, it, it was a great gathering in my grandmother's place and all that so as we grew up you no know, when i was in school and coming back from hostel coming back home from hostel was a great thing to do and getting back to the hostel with friends was a another nice thing to get back to friends so that was just coming back home and going to friends back to school to do that and then finally when i was in my ninth standard cell my father said you're getting married soon it was a great shock to me so once i finished my ninth i didn't even finish my ninth standard i was just i just came in december for my winter holidays and my father said this is what is going to happen it was a time when we had you no know, my appa itself means uh, a fear and you no know, and lot of respect for him so i didn't have the guts to say no for this i i we didn't even think of saying no so i was like shocked and i refused to get back to school because i sat in an icsc uh school where uh, it was a convent and i can imagine how much i'll be ragged if i get back to school so i didn't want to go back and it was it was a it was a terror some time for me so i did my consent during uh, i mean with five, with distance learning and then somehow we got it postponed i got married after 3 years 16 years i was engaged 18 years i was married so after i got married only i decided that i should learn more then my husband let me do that and then i did a lot of uh, courses uh, did all my exams in sanskrit in hindi and uh, classical music lower and higher typewriting shorthand and then i did my ba sociology that way and uh, it goes on i did a lot of courses uh, online offline now it's online but those days it was all distance learning 
So I learned music and all that. So that's how I wanted to be a graduate before my children were graduates. So that's how I was a graduate after I got married. It was a self-made journey. Wonderful. This is a great message for all the, uh, um, what do you say? The housewives. Yes. Who say, oh, after marriage, my I'm done. No, it's not done. Your journey begins. You could really, again, uh, re uh, rejoin and continue with your studies. You can study again, complete, like you've done that. That's wonderful. Now. Excellent. And today you're here as a transformational coach. That's really nice. You've transformed yourself and hence you're focusing on transforming others. I get, I get to see that. That's really beautiful. Wonderful. Now. Dear ma'am, I have a question now. The person who sat on the chair where the bubble gum was kept, now, was it was that person a family member or an outsider? It was an outsider. And then uh, finally, she became my family member. Okay. <laughs> my aunt, she became. So till day, they don't know that we were the brats who did that. So that was real fun. Uh, till, till today, I think only my cousins know about this. Nobody else knows. So I think now my aunt will get to know. Yeah, that's it. If she gets to see this. this video, she'll get to know that you were all there. Yeah. That. Yes. Dear ma'am, what about books? Any in any nice book interests you that you love to read this book, maybe either in Tamil or in English? Uh I do a lot of reading nowadays because that's when that's how uh, we tend to get to know a lot of things. So books are really uh, great windows to the world. So recently I did a book review on a book uh, written by Deepak Chopra. The book's name is uh, Seven uh, Spiritual Laws of Success. So that book really inspired me. And then uh, I had to do a review on uh, Zoom about this book. And then uh, that book tells me, uh, gave me a lot of uh, insights on the more you give, the more you receive. I was talking about this law of karma, right? So if you want love, we always seek for love outside. So when you seek for love, only when you give love, you receive love. So if you want attention, people are always wanting attention. People are always looking for appreciation. So the more you give appreciation, the more you will give, you will get appreciation. We all look for how many likes we've got in Facebook or how many people have watched our videos or how many people have watched our uh, Instagram reels and all that. But how far have we, have we been looking at somebody else's uh, uh, thing and like their posts? We never do that. Right. So coming to wealth also, they say the the more fondly you give money to others, money will get back to you that way, they say. So the universe um, gives you so much back. When you give so much, you get also, you get it back also. So it also says that um, uh, the law of karma also that book has told me given me a message that when you whenever you're in sorrow the universe is telling you something even if i go through a fracture the universe is conveying some message to me we should realize that what is the universe conveying to me by this instant what is uh, the universe telling me what is the supreme power telling me okay time for rest time for taking good care of your health recently uh, i'm 55 and recently, when I go, went through some health issues, I realized that though I'm young at heart, these health issues have already come. So what is this universe trying to tell me? Okay, time to slow down. Time to settle down. Not settle, but maybe slow down. Time to look after your health. That's what the universe is telling me. So when you don't have to go to get down and feel, oh, why now? Why me? No. Some, some message the universe is telling you. What is that message is what you have to look into. The message is, okay, fine, enough. You also have to slow down, take more care of your health. Okay, that I got the message. So according to that, I've changed my lifestyle slowly and that's how it's going. So this is a nice book written by Deepak Chopra. So that recently has inspired me a lot. Yes, dear, that's really nice. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you very much. And thanks to Deepak Chopra as well for writing a lovely book like that. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, what about the change that you'd love to see in the world as you being connected with transformation and all of that? Where yeah. do you think the change really needs to be brought about? The change in the world, there's so much we could see. Uh, we feel, you no, know, we always want something. We want the world to be a better place, right? A lot of things we can think of. 
the first time I uh, went overseas, I thought, how clean this uh, city or this country is. Why not India? Then when I realized that, who is, what is the reason for India being so unclean? Who is to be blamed? We are always blaming the politicians or the government for doing such things. Are they the reason for us being so untidy? Then I realized that the change has to be me. The change has to start with me. Then I realized that we are the ones who are putting all the trash on the roads. And then they're saying India not, doesn't have clean roads. The society means me in all tone. I am also part of society. So then that's when I started not throwing any garbage in the roads, not throwing any, uh, uh, whatever, if I have biscuits, I will not throw the wrapper in the roads. You know, even if I had groundnuts or bananas, I will not throw the peels on the roads. I would always bring it back and throw it in some, you know, discarded gar garbage where there's uh, uh, zero waste and where there is no makum um, kupai, makada kupai, where decomposed and non-decomposed, uh, they have two waste bins at home. So that's how I started. Then seeing me, my children also started doing this. They also started not putting anything on the roads, not throwing anything on the roads. Then what more option did my husband have? Because children also falling. So he started falling. And then once we all follow this, my driver also started following this. Now my daughter's marriage has gone to a family. So they also, you no, know, they'll try to follow what the daughter-in-law is doing at home. And tomorrow if my son is married, he'll also have his own family. So that's how change starts. So that's when I realized that if one thing, if the world can change, we can have cleaner environments with the support of the society. And society means us, us means me. That's how it starts. And uh, I feel that humanity has to increase in this world. The humanity is getting very less humanity with men, the co-men, humanity with animals. How much we are seeing, you know, on the roads. We have to also conserve water, uh, save the soil, conserve electricity. Of course, decrease the population. And the most important, I feel, is we need to have a change in the education system, especially in India. Why are we still uh, going with rhymes like London Bridge is falling down, Jack and Jill fell down, rain, rain, go away, all negative things. The British have left us so many, so many years back. Why are we still following those silly rhymes? Mostly negative rhymes. When we have so much written by our own, own, uh, scriptures, you no know, own own poets who have written such lovely rhymes. Like in South India, we had a person called Avayar. She's written a lot of values. We have a great person called Tiruvalluvar. There are people who have written so much values for young children. Bharadiyar, Bharadi, there are so many great men. But why are we still following those uh, negative rhymes? The first thing our child knows is Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. He had a great fall or rain go away or no, London Bridge is falling down. I'm still against this education system. And uh, if we have to bring a change in the world, I feel that we have to conserve the nature and also change the education system. Wonderful. That's a beautiful way to share that. Yes, dear. Very nice. Uh, it's, a, it's good food for thought, like as to where the change has to be brought about. Excellent. Dear ma'am, what about friendship in your life? How far have friends been with you through the ups and downs? Friends have been my everything, actually. I have friends. My, I still have my school friends with me. Though I have not gone into a college life, I still have very young friends, uh, thanks to social media like Facebook, who have bought back school friends. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten in touch with them. Maybe very few of them. But uh, social media like Facebook has brought a lot of friends together. We have a school re reunions. And I have friends, my cousins and friends, who have been with me from my childhood. And uh, there are friends who are, though I don't meet them often, though I don't speak to them often, I know they are there for me somewhere. So anytime they're always there for me, like that I have a few friends. But I feel friends are people who you can share anything with. So though you have, even if you have one such friend, you are gifted, I would say. So you don't have to have a lot of friends, but at least a, one or two very good friends who can share anything with you. I have a few friends to that. So friends are where you can let out your feelings, let out your, uh, you, know, you can be your own self. Yes. Dear. That's how yes. friendship is. 
Yes, that's wonderful. You have beautiful friends around you. That's nice. Now, dear ma'am, if you were given an opportunity by the almighty or the universal energy to select a superpower. Super superpower. Power, okay. Mahasakti, they say, right? What kind of a superpower would you love to have? Maybe if somebody is going through agony, I would like to take it out. Especially if it's a woman because uh, she has lots of things locked inside her heart, not able to tell it out. So when I see women uh, crying in agony, not able to make, bring about a change, I feel that somehow I should take off the agony in them. There are a lot of people suffering with um, physical, uh, no, physical uh, it is where they're not able to even buy any medicine. Today, in spite of medicines, we are so comfortable with ourselves. When I see people on the roads with going through a lot of hell, I feel they don't even have anything to even eat. How will they even spend for medicine? So if I had that superpower, I would take out any agony people are going through. Beyond okay. that, no, if they're going through agony, not because of themselves, because they're designed to be that way, then that agony, I would take it off. That's very nice. Very compassionate, ma'am. I really love this answer. To remove the pain of others. That's the superpower that I love to have. Wonderful. Very true. And it's so nice that you think on those beautiful lines. Dear ma'am, we'll come down to the next question. Now, ma'am, there are people who are unable to save for their, as you mentioned about money, they don't have money to buy medicines, leave alone medicines, they don't have money for food as well. Now, how would you enlighten and empower us with regard to savings? Even if one has not saved money till date, how does one go about savings and creating a, a secure future for themselves? Today I see a lot of uh, mothers and fathers um giving away everything they have to the children and then finally they don't uh, keep anything for themselves. I've been going training for uh, retirement people in uh, BSNL, that's the Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited and for the electricity board. I go training for them for regarding training, uh, sorry, retirement. So retirement, I always tell them, please keep money for yourselves till your last uh, breath. Because today, in today's world, people are always after your money. Money plays a very vital role. Especially these days for your medical expenses, you have to keep a certain amount, a percentage of your savings exclusively for your medical expenses. We know we have gone through a lot of people or even us, some of us in the family. Once you get into a hospital, you know how much money is gone how much uh, the medical, I don't want to go into the details, but you know how it is. So I would I would really suggest after a certain age or after, during the retirement age, always keep a part of it for yourself. Maybe almost 60% of it for yourselves because your life is more important. You are the person who have earned so much, saved all the money for the children. Is it okay, it's okay to give it to them after you, but not while you're still alive. Always keep a certain amount for travel. I always, even till then, I always save for some travel. I love to travel. So I keep part of it for travel, part of it for my whatever emergency expenses. So I would suggest that keep whatever you see. For me, it's travel. For, for you, it can be some of your personal, uh, you know, some likings. You might well want to uh, go for a excursion or a holiday or you might want to travel or you want, might want to party with your friends also. Whatever you like to do, keep a certain amount for that and a certain amount exclusively for your medical expenses. I would say 30-30-30% just separate it and keep it for each of this. One for your personal whatever you want to do, one for your uh, medical expenses and maybe one for the children. Because uh, people are here only for our money. So that's how keep something for yourselves because you have you are the most important person in your life. Thank you, ma'am, for that wonderful message. Thank you. It's very nice to make us feel good about ourselves, to respect ourselves first, and then create a happy, happy space for us and for others as well. I really like the way you put that. How would you want people to remember Meena Raja? And why should people remember Meena Raja? 
there's a book called um, by Robert Sharma which says uh, Who Will Cry When You Die? And also I have this um, uh, taught by the Isha Foundation that always um, think of yourself in your deathbed and see who all are crying for you, what people are talking about you. Once you start realizing that, you will you will you will want to live a better life. Realize that we lost so many people during the pandemic. What are we talking about them? Are we talking about their riches? Are we talking about their studies? We are only talking about how compassionate they were. We are only talking about how nice a person that person was. Nothing else we are talking about that dead person. Only your good acts, your good deeds will come behind you. Not your studies, not your riches. So I want to be remembered as a person with a helping hand. I want to be remembered as a person who has triggered somebody's life to a better person. And I want to be remembered as a life changer for somebody. If that small thing I can be as a bridge from the universe to that person, if I can act as a bridge from the universe to that person, that will be of great help for that person. I would, I would uh, die peacefully. So that is one thing I want to be remembered for. Yes, dear. That's beautiful, ma'am. Thank you very much for sharing. That's wonderful. What do you love about Meena Raja? Uh, I'm very easygoing. And the one thing I like about myself is the how 100% uh, sincere I am to myself. So to whatever I do, but if I'm at home, I do it 100%. If I'm out of home, I give my 100% to them. I like my sincerity to what I'm doing and the involvement with what I'm doing. So of late, uh, I have just thought about work and life balance. Of late, I've read this book uh, written by Tikhna Chan. He's a great uh, author. He says that even eating or breathing or walking, uh, anything you do, even each step you keep on the ground, we should be aware, we should be conscious of it, they say. So I've learned it from him. Even eating, you know, be very conscious. So I've stopped watching any TV, watching anything or reading anything while reading. I give my eating also full uh, involvement. So that's one thing I like in myself. I'm 100% I'm sincere. And I get involved in whatever I do. Yes, dear ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing. That's really wonderful. Thank you. Now, dear ma'am, now... There are people who hurt us. It could be our close ones. It could be strangers. It could be our friends. It could be anyone who hurt us. And then we are unable to forgive them. Even if we forgive them, they repeat that mistake again and again. So how many times do we forgive the people who we love? Especially. Strangers, of course, they, they, we can forgive them. They don't come back in our path. But our family members, our friends... They know that we have a soft corner for them. Time and again, they hurt us. So what value does forgiveness have in this scenario? It's, it's nice to forgive and forget, actually. But beyond that, you have your own self-esteem. If you have done wrong, it's okay to be scolded at or you know, whatever. Uh, this thing. But if you have not done any wrong, if you're not in the wrong way, if you're not in the exactly what they're saying. If you're not that way, you don't have to even care a hair for them. You have your self-esteem more than that. And always think empathetically, why are they saying so? If there's a, I mean, if there's a no, proper intention behind anything, then you can forgive, forget, and go to go through what they're wanting from you. If there is no proper intention behind if the intention is only to hurt you, why do you have to give that shakti to them? Because your happiness and uh, sadness, the key you have given in their hands, the key to your happiness and your making you sad should be with you. There are people who know your, your weak points and trigger them always. It is okay to get triggered at first, but it's time for us to know the intention behind. If the intention is just to hurt you, 
then it's time to have the key of your happiness in your hands. There was a time when I used to get up every morning and see if my maid is there or not. If the maid comes, I'm happy. If she doesn't come, oh, it's me who's going to do all the work. Then there was a time when I realized that every morning I give my happiness key to that maid. The happiness key should actually be with me. So now it's like, if she's come, okay, fine. If she's not come, okay, fine. It's time for me to some exercise. So it's become that way. Nobody can take away your happiness. Nobody can take away your sad, make you sad. The key should be with us. If the intention is not so good, you don't have to give the key to them. They're not worth it. So always have the key of your happiness and your sadness with us, with you. Yes, dear. That's really nice. I really like that explanation. That's beautiful. A, a big takeaway for me and for everyone as well. And for me especially. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, what about your proudest accomplishment? When did you feel that you did your very best and wow, I achieved this. This makes, makes me really feel uh, on top of the world. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I got this opportunity to work uh, with um, Ayush Actually, it is something called Central Council of Indian Medicine, CCIM. And under Central Council of Indian Medicine, I had to work with Ayush. Ayush is, uh, uh, is allopathy, no, no, Ayurveda, no. Excluding, Ayu, uh, excluding allopathy, all the others, Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, and homeopathy. Yeah, all this put together is Ayush. Uh, so they have a lot of colleges uh, beyond the South, uh, South uh, like Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. All the other states have lots and lots of colleges, uh, Ayush colleges. So I had this option to work uh, beyond no, only North India. So I had to travel alone. And when I got this option, I just asked my family if I could go. And then I said, if you are confident enough, you can go. So I had to, since it was a central government uh, uh, scheme, I had to book my own tickets, pay for my all my travel, go, go alone, work there and come back alone. And then after a month or so, I will get my payment. And that's how it went. So initially, I've never traveled alone that way. Maybe by train to a next uh, city, I could have, I would have gone, but not to a next state or thoroughly north by flight. So that's when I took this opportunity. I, I don't know, till, till today, I realized how did I go do all that all those years back? But it's been 20, 10 to 12 years now. Um, I went all by myself and worked in um, Chandigarh, Lucknow, Gujarat, uh, Srinagar, then Rishikesh. Uh, so we went around training uh, deans and doctors in uh, soft skills. So when I got this opportunity, I kept telling, how can I go train deans and doctors? Then my mentor, he told me, uh, see, they are doctors by profession. They, have lo they know that profession. But soft skills, they don't know. So just go and teach them soft skills. So that's how I got the, this thing. And I took this opportunity uh, to travel by myself. And I learned a lot about how confident I am, how uh, I'm able to handle things. And there were instances where the train, the flights got canceled and I had to stay alone. And that's how I, I got some more friends all over India. And uh, that thing I feel till today, that's the... Uh, hardest thing I've done till day. So that gives me more confident that I can do much more now. That's really great, ma'am. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Dear ma'am, what about pets? Personally, I'm not very fond of pets. I don't uh, like uh, pets getting into my bed and getting into the kitchen and all that. So I'm very, uh, I look into cleanliness that way. But I, you know, whenever I feel lonely here, my friends tell me, have a pet, you will never feel lonely. So I keep telling, I keep, no, I keep getting pups. No, because with pups, I'm not so scared. So I keep getting pups when, when they get a little older, I, I don't, uh, I, I mean, I'm not able to handle them. I just give them off. So though I'm not very fond of pets personally, but I do see friends. I like friends. I like to see friends fondling them, cuddling them. No, I like uh, seeing them getting back home and then this pets wagging their tails and no, they're like more like a family member, more like children. 
uh, beyond that i would say so seeing uh, my friends having a great friend in their pets i like watching but i never uh, like having them at home i do have uh, fishes in my uh, pond fishes in my glass bowl or even some lovebirds and finches it's that not dogs and cats yes dear at least you like to watch others petting their dog or yeah. cat yes that's yeah. a beautiful thing yes dear i understand I'm scared that. of dogs and that is also very therapeutic when watching others petting their cat or you know a dog maybe that's also good even if you don't have one with you but as your parents said having a dog or a cat or a pet is really very great you feel really uh, you have a companion and you can talk Thank to you. it and they, they respond also very well yes yes dear yeah. nevertheless you really love to watch the pets of your friends and maybe your family members too if they have dear ma'am now we have a small segment called as the rapid fire round we'll get to know about your likes and dis dislikes okay yes dear and we'd love to have many more interactions with you in the future there are se several questions still that i have to ask you but you have done a lot of justice with what questions i posed in front of you you answered them very well deep from within your thank heart you. and the wisdom that you have thank you very thank much you. thank you yes. Dear friends, now we have a small segment called as the rapid fire round. We'll get to know about the likes and dislikes of our celebrity and guest. She is Miss Meena Raja joining us all the way from Amba Samudram, Tamil Nadu, India. I got that right. Yes, dear? Yes. And friends, it's located somewhere near Kanyakumari towards the tip of South India, the end, the end of South India. Dear ma'am, what your favorite color? Black and white. I love the combo. Excellent, ma'am. That's wonderful. Black and white. The name of your favorite teacher in school? Uh, Mrs. Uh, what's her name? Elizabeth. Your favorite movie? I don't have one movie as such. A lot of movies because I love a movie for sometimes its director, sometimes cinematography, sometimes for its BGM. So for each, maybe I'll have a movie, but it's uh, sometimes for its music. On the whole, Pardon among me? all of that, the one movie which has all of these elements in them. Roja. Perfect. I do love that movie. Yes, dear. What brings a smile to your face? You have a beautiful smile. I should compliment you for that. And what keeps you smiling all the Whenever time? Whenever I see your uh, love of humanity, I'm very happy. I think it brings a smile to me. Oh, what a beautiful way to answer that. Excellent. That's beautiful. Do you get angry too? Yes, Honi. I used to. I still get angry. But so much I've listened now. Yes, dear. And when you feel low, when you feel down, when you feel lost, where do you get the energy to rise back? From where do you get derive that strength to face life again? First is I get silent. I go for a, a wash and then I listen to my favorite music. Yes. You believe in experiential learning or theoretical learning? Experiential learning. More of a thinker or a doer? Doer. Are you a good cook too? Yes. Your favorite cuisine? I'm a foodie, so you can't ask me that. I like everything. Like, you know, I'm a foodie. I really love uh, all the authentic food. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, among all the 12 months, which is your favorite one? January. Any specific reason? Is it Pongal? No, no, not Pongal. Uh, it's, a, it's a new start, right? You want to be a new you. You want to do something new. You want to be someone, uh, something better. So it's always regarded with, uh, through transformation. That's a month of transformation. So January is a, always a good start. Yes, dear. Uh, the most important day of the week. For me, all days, uh, it's the same. I don't have any Sunday. I don't have any Monday. It's all the same for me. Your favorite number? All day, good day. Oh, good. Pardon That's me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, ma'am. That's really nice. Your favorite number? Number numero one. <laughs> Comfort or style? Pardon me? Comfort or style? 
comfort did you ever regret spending money on any item or article and then regret regretted why did i buy it i used to uh, i mean uh, buy a lot of gadgets but uh, once i started following minimalism some gadgets we don't use at all just to buy we buy then i stopped using them now so i regret buying them now without thinking twice so now when i want to buy something i always say let's wait for 6 months if still i have the urge i'll buy it or i always ask myself is it really needed the answer is mostly no so i stopped buying that way i used to do that yes dear and you ma'am the insect that you don't like cockroaches is tea or coffee pardon me tea or coffee uh, at times tea at times coffee depends on the mood and the situation and the place where i am are you an introvert extrovert or ambivert i am an extrovert you love socializing or me time i mean what do you prioritize i love socializing uh i have realized that i should have me time nowadays that's really nice dear ma'am the next question coming up any weakness yeah any one a <laughs> lot of weakness i'm lazy at times and uh, i don't move much i try to sit in a place and get things done and that's one thing i'm not uh, being consistent is my greatest weakness so i'm working on that yes dear very honest on that dear thank you a nice quotation from your side uh nice quotation how rich your life is is about how many people's lives you've touched it's been my this quote has been pondering inside my mind a lot so it's been my favorite quote till day it's not about the riches you have that's not how rich you are how many people's lives you've touched is how rich your life can be what a beautiful answer excellent i think one of the best answers to that question till date on this platform i might have interviewed all, almost 400 members and i love this answer of yours that's wonderful thank you thank you yes dear, dear ma'am we go on to the next question how many languages are you conversant in i can converse in four hindi tamil english and telugu is my mother tongue so i can converse i can read and write in all uh, three i can't read and write in telugu but i can and i know a little of sanskrit too Yes, dear. That's wonderful. Are you an early bird or a night owl? I used to be a night night owl, but now I'm becoming an early bird. You would love to prefer to stay on a beach for some time or in a forest to rewind to re energize yourself and come. Nature sometimes uh, it's the mountains, sometimes it's the beaches, sometimes it's the forest. So nature on the whole is beautiful. Any any however, does nature is beautiful. Honestly, I love the sunsets and the sunrises in the beaches. Yeah. I love the stillness of the mountains. I love the birds and the forests. So each one is unique in its own way. Difficult to choose. That's really nice. And if I may go on with the next question, the next question would be like, what would you give to the person who came in front of you and asked you to just give something out of your hand? Like, what would you be able to give that person? Is it your the thoughts or is it something materialistic that you would give them or you would give them a nice pep talk what is it the first thing i would give is my uh, very warm and tight hug because that thing is what we all uh, really really from the bottom of the heart we all love to be touched and hugged and you know, get, get the feel of warmth from a person how many of our words you say to them how many of you know the person will forget what to tell them but a person will never forget how you made them feel so that's one thing which uh, especially women we all love to be we love to be wanted you know right i hope you understand what i'm trying to say we like to be wanted so when you give a hug to somebody that person knows he's wanted or she is wanted that's one thing which is really uh, wanting for anybody for that matter any human being wants to be wanted yes dear. so a tight hug should... will be the first thing i will do yes dear. to be felt loved appreciated and to be you know given that a uh, space that yeah that you are important giving them that importance yes yes, yes. yes. wonderful man to be valued in the right kind of way a hug could tell that yes dear. to feel wanted too dear ma'am 
on a scale of 1 to 10, how much would you rate yourself with regard to forgiving others? 9, I would say. I would uh, forgive them fully, but maybe I will not forget I would, uh, why I would not forget is, I will try to keep away. That will be a lesson for me. If I forget immediately, I'll get back to them again. So forgive nine, forget I will not because I will try to keep away from such people and try not to get back to that situation again. Yes, dear. That's wonderful. That's very true also. We have to be careful. We can't put ourselves again at risk because we've already faced once, once bitten, twice shy. shy. Once bitten, twice shy. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. Nadia, ma a beautiful day in one word. Beautiful day in one word? Love. Brilliant. Brilliant. You see, when I ask many of them over here, when they join me on this platform, please share this in one word. Some of them take five minutes to share it. Some of them take it, put it in one sentence. Some of them put it in two, three sentences. I want it just in one word. And so you've done justice to that question. Thank you. Thank you. It's Thank love. You. Yes, that's beautiful. It could be anything. It could be peace. It could be love. But I want it in one word. And so you've done justice to that. Thank you. That's really Thank nice. You. When you're alone, ma'am, where do, do your thoughts take you? Past, present or future? Surely to the present. Because I've learned that uh, past is always a cancel check. Uh, future is it's not in our hands. Future is... Um, never going to be in your hands. You never know what's going to happen in the future. Present is a gift. That's why it's called present. So present is all that we have to work for. Yes, dear. that's wonderful. Beautifully explained. Your favorite season? Favorite season? Season, of course, is uh, spring, where we see the transformation and all blooming and happening things are happening in spring. Yes. So it's so beautiful to watch everything spring up. Very back true. to life. Very true. As you are from Amba Samudram, I'd like to ask you this question. Do you like to spend time in a village, a town or a city? I used to love it in the cities because I was brought up there. And then now after so many years, I realized that um, village is the best place to be. Since I'm also almost a village, so this is the place where you get the freshest of water, freshest of air, and, and you know the, the most lovable people. People are so raw. People are so genuine. People are so innocent. People are so giving over here. So I'll never get back to a city again. Even if it is for some reason, I'll always want to get back home, get back to my hometown. So it's been that way. That's really nice. They're very true too. You're not manipulative. All I can say is that, you know, the people in the village, they are not manipulative. They are very simple. And yeah, down exactly. Down to it. Yes, dear. Yeah, ma'am, your favorite season. Did I ask you this? You said a spring season and you'd love to see things yeah. bloom and, you know, you love that. That I So I repeated that question. Now, I come down with this question. You love ice creams too? I didn't hear you. Ice creams. Yeah, of course. Which flavor? Chocolate. You could prepare them too or just buy them? Like what? I used to prepare in between. But now I, when I prepare, you tend to eat more. So it's just on and off. I just buy. Yes, dear. Ma'am, till date, the best gift that you've ever received? Gift? I always know how much of gifts I have. The warmest of hugs has been the best gift I've ever received. What the, was I would say the warmest hug. No, uh, that appreciation. It always, no, I, I, that is the best gift I could have ever had. The warmest of hugs. Yes, dear. That's really nice. Now, ma'am, before we say goodbye to each other for today and join again on the next session in future, I'd like you to give us three gifts. One is a virtual hug from here. <laughs> and uh, three special gifts in the form of three words. Apart from please, sorry, and thank you, we always put in a request uh, to all the celebrities and guests here on the International Fab Talks to th share three magical words that could impact our lives, we could focus and transform our lives for the better. Humanity, compassion, and giving. Wonderful. 
humanity, compassion, and a person who's always giving. That speaks volumes about your personality. When we ask you these three, you know, that sums up to the entire personality. I feel like that personally, that what all is in your mind, who you really are, you, reveal, you will reveal it through those three words. And very beautifully, you have said, you have a lot of compassion and humanity, uh, you know, across wanting to transform people. That's why, you know, when you're connected to human beings, you want them to transform. You can't see them suffering or in toxic situations or in, in different um, sad situations. You want them to transform, especially women, as you said. So that's big volumes. You can't see them in pain. And you've also said, like, be giving. That's really nice. So that's really wonderful, ma'am. You're a great human being. I'm really very happy to have met you today. You're very warm. And I like you for being warm. Thank and you. I could resonate Thank with you on many things that you've shared. Looking forward to many, many more interactions with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, is Christelle your name? I didn't even ask for your name. I feel so bad about that. So we've been thinking of International Fab Talk, but I've never asked you for your name. So taking Christelle as your name, I'm so happy to have you. Actually, I was so impressed with your uh, interview, interviewing to them, Ramsa, and I could feel the vibe you're sharing with anybody who was you're interviewed by you. So I was so much impressed when you said you should also do the show with her. So I could feel that I will not feel out of place uh, being with you. And I love the way you connected and I love the uh, way you, you could understand our feelings so beautifully. Being a woman, of course, we can understand everybody else's feelings so beautifully and what are we going to take with us after we are away from this world? So just a few words of compassion, just a few words of appreciation is all that we're going to give each other. No, I mean, empower each other and then move forward. We should help each other. That's how the world should be. So thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I'm looking forward to my ever first interview in YouTube. So I've been wanting to be a YouTuber too, but maybe after this, this may be a, a flag sign for me to start a YouTube channel too. Let's see, let's wait and watch to see how much this is creating an impact with anybody. I'd love to know how people have taken this. What have they taken from this? Is it uh, given any a small change in their lives? So let's wait and watch. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for being so kind and gentle. You're very genuine. The point what I've understood, you're very genuine and very, uh, you know, down to earth where anybody could approach you. And I would love all the youngsters out there who are being misguided. You don't know what's going on in your life. You want a mentor. You want a coach. You could always connect with us, celebrity and guest, Miss Meena Raja, ma'am. She'll do her very best to see that you're transformed because okay. she does it from the heart and she keeps confidential confidentiality. Like, what, it's a one-to-one -one session that you know what's going on and you could share it with her. She will really guide you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I wouldn't want to let you go, but then I have to let you go because I respect your time. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye. 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 Thank you. My dear friends, with this, we come to an end to the International Fab Talks for today. We have several questions still for ma'am. We'll invite her once again on the International Fab Talks for another session with her. But for now, it's a bye from all of us. And please do us a favor, share this beautiful video with the right kind of people. Somebody out there may be wanting to listen to all of this, the wisdom that was shared today by Miss Nina Raja. So please share this video with one and all such that they could be empowered and you could also be empowered yourself as well. Please do like, comment, subscribe and share. Don't forget to enjoy your life. Be happy and have a heart filled with lots of humanity. Stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you.